TogiNet Radio has partnered with one of the largest travel booking engines in the world to offer savings of 15 to 30 percent or even more. I give you the opportunity to go look at their hotel fees and take advantage of their cost savings. Please go to www.bestradiotravel.com. Check them out. I think you'll be pleased. Welcome to Second Win with Joyce Buford, a program for and about women. Joyce Buford is a certified coach and motivational speaker who has a passion for helping women who need a second win. She is the author of the Amazon bestseller, Effortless Happiness, How to Find Your Voice and Finally Ask for What You Really Want. She studied directly with her mentor, Jack Canfield, and is a fully certified coach in his program. Also, she has served as an assistant in his training programs. Through her study with many prestigious coaches and mentors, she has created a powerful program that has positively impacted thousands of people. On today's program, Joyce and her guests will help you to get your second wind. Now here's your host, Joyce Buford. Good morning or afternoon, wherever you are and whenever you're listening. It's always a thrill for me to know that you're out there listening to Second Wind. And you know, Second Wind is all about giving that woman that needs that extra chance at life, a new beginning, a way to grow herself into a bigger self or a more fabulous self. Um, I like to think of Second Wind as a resource. When I was going through my uh, transition, I, which was a divorce, I found and wanted a tool that I could use to help me hear of other people that had gone through a transition in their life and how they had had grown through that experience. So that's why I created the podcast, so that you had the opportunity to hear how other women have made this transition. And the amazing thing, the amazing thing is how they have grown so much more on the other side of their transition. It's awesome. Well, today my guest is going to be bringing you her information about transition. But she has a new perspective that we've not talked much about in the past on on other shows. Carrie Hummingbird which I love your name, Carrie. I love hummingbirds. And I bet you're so tired of them. But Carrie Hummingbird is a soul guide, a mentor, an author, and an inspirational speaker, and the host of Soul Nectar Show. Now, she is a certified in energy medicine, certified in artist of the spirit coach, and she's certified in empowerment and fire walking, which is awesome if you've never done that. Prior to her career of where she is today as the soul guide, Carrie had a 20 year career as a technical and marketing communication consult, consultant in both Silicon Valley and Austin high tech community. So yes, she is a Texas woman joining another Texas woman to give you the message today. She has been an entrepreneur for over 25 years, from consultant to fine arts and crafts, and now healing, speaking, and mentoring. Today, Carrie leads women to becoming the leading lady of her life. I love that, Carrie. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. This is a great, uh, great forum that you're holding because this is a difficult transition for a lot of women. So I'm really glad that you're doing this show. Oh, thank you. This is major. And you and I are very, very similar in how we like to help that woman make that transition. So I'm thrilled that you're here because you have a, you add a whole another dimension to growth and how to get there. 
So I'm really excited that you're here too. Now I will share with you that I think the firewalk is one of the most empowering things I have done over my transition period. How did you get into that? Well, I got into the firewalk because I, uh, I had been doing, uh, let's see, I was in a 20 year relationship, which ended. And then I spent about six months sort of floundering around. And then I got a teacher yeah. and that teacher led me to open up to this whole idea that there was something I could do to connect with that, which is bigger than me. And I yeah. never had like a religious or spiritual path before. So mm-hmm. I ended up um, at the end of that path finding Heather Ashamara, who became one of my teachers actually, and she leads firewalking. So I yes. went to one of her firewalks, you know, and it was like I'm like, well, you know what? I'm open to new experiences. I'm going to try this out <laughs> and see what it's like. <laughs> I can try it, yes. and it opened a huge door for me, like a really big door. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. I um, I think I've done it three times. And I know you've probably done it many more times than that. But each time I, I found that that experience of walking on the hot coals, and yes, my dear listeners out there, they are hot, but we're walking so fast, we're not sondering where we're walking, but it's facing your fears and moving through that, that at the other end of the walk just gives you so much power that it's just... um really very freeing and empowering, I found. Did you find that that way, Gary? I did. And for me, there's a larger context because I'd been learning about earth-based uh, spirituality and the elements. And one of the ah, elements is fire. And fire yes. is actually a purifier. So fire yes. became a really good ally on my journey of, like, transition from where I was to where I wanted to be uh-huh. because uh-huh. it helped me release things I didn't want, and it helped to empower me and fuel me and give me confidence and yeah, so walking across the fire for me was all of that as well as the traditional Tony Robbins kind of like walk across the fire because you, you know, face your fear. That is definitely yeah. the starting point. But there's like a whole world after that of how fire can help you purify yourself and really get a lot of energy and healing even. You can get healing in your body from the fire. Yeah. Do you offer fire walks now in your work? I do. I lead fire walks in Austin. And I mm-hmm. do them several times a year. Oh, awesome. Well, I'm only four miles, to it. four hours away. So <laughs> we just have to come out. Yeah, that would be, that would definitely be a draw for me. But I would, I really, I mean, your life has just done a, a, a 360, uh, from being a commuter, a techie. I'm going to call you techie. I hope you don't mind. But, uh, okay. <laughs> my son is a techie. I love him dearly. Uh, but, uh, that was a major transition for you. Uh, you talk about your early life and how you made that defining moment, I'll say, or, or your history. Do you mind sharing that with our listeners today? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I had been in a 20-year relationship, and simultaneously I'd been through almost as many years of uh, psychotherapy, uh, yeah. trying to fix me to make me acceptable to my partner and to yeah. anybody else, because I kind of always had that message that there was something I needed to fix inside me, that there was problems, because I'd had some early childhood trauma, things that yeah. happened, and definitely that's a true, you know, that there were things to resolve, but... Psychotherapy ended up not being my uh, my best modality, so mm. I tried that. It kind of it kind of just made me go into a downward spiral, actually. And it, the marriage was very challenging because it was my, um, you know, sort of my polar opposite. So we were yes. so different. We were trying, mm. to, and I think a lot of people go through this. But he, I basically married my mother, and so here I am <laughs> trying to, you know, get through this relationship. <laughs> So not really realizing I'd married my mother, but having this strange sense that I did and not really being able to pinpoint it. But all yeah. the psychotherapy to try to, to fix it, and it just got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse, and things were not getting better. The, the pills didn't fix it. Nothing really fixed it. So basically, at that 20-year mark, I said, okay, I either have to leave or, or I'm not going to be here anymore, so I need to go. Yeah. So yeah. when I walked out, I still wanted to heal. I just didn't know how. And yes. what happened was 
that um, that I got hooked in with uh, somebody who said, okay, let's go to yoga. I'd never been to yoga, so I'm like, okay, I'll try yoga. And, <laughs> I'm open. You know, <laughs> sure, you know, if it's, I, I, but that's why, you know, when you're at the bottom of the barrel, you'll try anything. So I was like, I'll, I'll try yoga. So yes. it actually helped me. And then I started mentoring with this, with uh, the, my yoga teacher, who was a spiritual mentor. But then that uh-huh. opened another door because my friend said, hey, uh, you know, one night she said, hey, I got healed by a shaman and it really helped. And that really mm. pushed my ears up. You know, I was like, mm-hmm. what's a shaman? You know, like, <laughs> what is that? I want to know now, what that you, is. Were you in California still or were you in Texas? No, I was in Texas, which is an unlikely place oh. to find a shaman. Yes. A shaman, but, uh, you know... Uh, so I actually, as it turned out, I went home and I Googled it because you can do that now. I said, okay, shaman in Austin. You know, what the heck? I'll find one. I love and, this. Okay, that's not really the way it works indigenously. Like, you don't really just do that with the indigenous people. You don't dial one of the hundred shaman. Yeah. They don't show up that way. But, but you know, Caucasian, you know, Western people, like, we, we tend to, like, put things out there with a the phone number. So yeah. I I got the website. And he calls himself a shamanic practitioner, but Gary Starnes, uh, locally in Austin, has a Austin shamanic community, and he ended up being my first mentor. So I went into the meeting with him, and I said, I sat down, and we, and you sit on the floor. There's, like, all these nice rugs, and you sit on the floor, which is like, hey, I'm downgraded. Like, I was on a couch, and now I'm on the floor, you know? Like, <laughs> this is going the wrong direction. But basically, I sat there, and he, I had to, had to interview for his course. He has this course called Spirit Paths the quest for authenticity and so I had to interview for this course and at yeah. the end of the interview I looked at him and I said I know my life has been a little bit miserable am I qualified for this course <laughs> and he said you are in the perfect place for this course <laughs> I was like great somebody that accepts me so I I went in there and like within a month I had my first spiritual healing from him wow. and this was the pivotal moment for me this yeah. was really the pivotal moment because I'm lying on the floor. Now I'm not sitting. I'm lying. So I'm like, oh, gee, oh. You know, my brain's like, it's getting worse. You know? <laughs> but I'm lying on the floor and he's drumming because he's taking a, what they call a shamanic journey into yeah. um, his meditation field to see, you know, what is the, what's the problem with me? Like, why is it that I'm struggling so much? What is it? What's the root cause? And he's, and he's drumming and he's looking for a vision on that. Well, I'm lying on the floor, and my mind is going about a bazillion miles a minute, and I'm thinking, this is, you know, full, you know, this is nothing, you know, like, this is ridiculous. I'm lying on the floor, and, and I just said, you know what, Carrie, just, you tried everything else, just, why don't you just try this, you know, just be yeah. quiet and see what happens. And the right. moment I decided that, he stopped drumming, and I felt a presence coming over over me. And this still makes me want to cry. I can't help it. Every oh. time I tell the story, I want to cry. Oh. But I felt this, this totally loving presence come in and hover above me, and I could feel it, which I'd never felt that before. And I yeah. thought, oh, my God, like there's something here. This is yeah. real. And I told him, I said, oh, my God, I feel something. And he, he just kind of laughed, and he said, you're so sensitive. I love how much you can feel things. But he started uh-huh. pulling things out of my heart, Joyce. Like, he started, like, taking this black energy out of my heart, which I'd always felt like like a menstrual cramp around my heart anytime anybody said yeah. something bad about me and it hurt so bad. He pulled it yes. out. I've never had it. I've never had that since. He pulled things out. Uh, and I thought, how How do I feel this? Like, what is this? I don't, I, I mean, I was, I was just flabbergasted, like, there's more, I'm not just one thing, like there's things that can be pulled out. I mean, I, I was, I yeah. was amazed. And in could, you minutes, I was Could you actually feel it? Could you actually feel the, the, whatever it was leaving? Well, Joyce, here's the thing that perplexed my mind. I could yeah. feel him pull it out and I could uh, feel him flick it a foot away from my body. How does that happen? Wow. I, 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 well, you are sensitive. Yeah. yeah, I was like, and I never knew that. So yeah. that woke me up. And after 45 minutes, I was different. And I just, I, I thought, whatever that is, I'm doing that. Not only am I doing it yeah. for me, but I'm learning how to do that because everybody deserves this. Nobody yes. deserves 20 years in psychotherapy, like struggling. Everybody right. deserves this healing. You know, like I got to yes. figure out what this is. Mm-hmm. Seriously. So that's, that's really how I got into doing what I do. Wow. Well, you refer to, you refer to walk the beauty way. 
What do you mean by that? Well, the indigenous walk. people walk the beauty way. And what that really means is walking barefoot on the earth, like walking step and step with spirit, connected uh-huh. to the earth consciousness, you know, really humbling yourself and mm-hmm. opening your heart and, and releasing all your defenses and listening, a lot of listening, and doing the things you're guided to do that you don't want to do, but that you mm-hmm. know are the right thing to do, but you don't want to do them because they're hard. Yeah, yeah. That's really the yeah. beauty way for me. Ah, so, I mean, learning the walk the beauty walk to walk the beauty way it i mean does that require training from a professional such as yourself and through your teacher uh to actually understand what that is i mean or is there like a handbook that comes with it i think you can do it just by being quiet meditation is a really good okay. start you know, yes. meditation and sitting and being quiet in nature, you know, sitting with your back against a tree and, and just really listening and, and getting still, you know, that's really the start of it. It's helpful to have a guide because your brain is talking so much at first that you just, you know, you can't even hear your hear spirit because the chatter in your mind is so intense. So it's helpful mm-hmm. to have, you know, some tools or to have a mentor to guide you to get started. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely to learn... What really helped me was learning how to open sacred space, which a lot of people don't know what that is or that you right. can even do that. And the indigenous right. people know it, and they do it all the time. And that's really calling in the four directions. It's calling in the south, the west, the north, and the east, the earth below, the sun and the moon and the stars above, and the great spirit, God, source, creator, universe, whatever your name is. But it sort of like creates a little box around you. And you, mm. if you do it from your heart, you know, you learn how to open sacred space. I do it every morning as a spiritual practice. I connect with each of the four directions, and they each have gifts. You know, each of them is sort of like a friend that has gifts. Mm. And I can, I can connect with, like, the West is really good with helping you release stuff. If you have a bunch of baggage you need to get rid of, well, you need to talk to the West. You know, like, uh, the West has a lot of support for you, you know. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's helpful to have a teacher to, to help you with that because at first it's hard to keep going with it because you don't believe it. Like your brain's like, ah, oh, nothing's yeah. there. Right. You know, I can, if you keep I'm, doing I'm, it, yeah. you'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I would think your brain would be really working over time if you didn't have that leader kind of going, letting, you know, showing you the way. I just think it'd be so beneficial. Now, you do webinars don't you? I do. I do a lot of webinars. I also have a program called Butterfly Circle. That's a year-long uh-huh. program to help you learn to walk the breezy way. And, uh, oh. you, you know, it's all about experiments. It's all about running mm-hmm. an experiment, trying different things. I don't mm-hmm. dictate anybody's spiritual path. I just provide a lot of options, you know, a lot of things yeah. to try. Right. Yeah. yeah. And it's helpful because you can't talk about this stuff with most people. Most people are like, that's weird. Or, you know, they don't understand, (laughs) like, mystical visions. You know, like, they think that's weird. But, like, it's actually a really sacred, beautiful experience. And so when you have one of those, the first thing you want to do is share it with somebody. So it's nice to have community where you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, in East Texas, we're in the middle of the Bible Belt. So... Sometimes you even talk about meditation. People go, oh, you mean talking prayer? And I went, no, meditation. <laughs> and it's Yeah, and it, I would say it's similar. You know, it's just that very with similar. prayer, you're asking for something. And right. with meditation, you're receiving. Yes. You know, yes. you're opening. With prayer, yeah. you, have a, you have an agenda. <laughs> you know, with yes, meditation, you, do. you don't. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you have some definite points that you like to, that uh, discuss. Uh, and one of them is that you believe that the, the transitions that we go through really offer us life changing events, right? So, oh, absolutely. Do you have like a, an example of somebody that you actually worked with that was an awesome uh, proof of this. I mean, you are already told us your story, and that was proof of it. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, uh, do you have ex- examples or situations that you can share with the listeners? 
Yeah. So basically what I would say, I'm trying that I didn't know you were gonna do that, so let me think about it. Sort of that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Whoops. I try to think of the best one. Yeah, so one of my people, absolutely. The divorce process for one of my clients, um, it was a long process because for me I just jumped ship. Like I got the sign from spirit and it was like it was the end of the rope. I saw it, and I was like, oh, that's the end of the rope. Okay, honey, I got to go. <laughs> this isn't working out. We tried this for a long time, and it's not working. Then my client, yeah. though, my, my client I want to talk about, she really, um, she is also a psychotherapist herself, and mm-hmm. so um, it was hard for her because she wanted to explore every angle. She wanted to be sure that she had done everything she could possibly do Yes. to be sure that she gave it her all in this relationship. Yeah. Right. And in the process of that, it was definitely a painstaking process. I mean, we, we explored every avenue for two years or more, mm-hmm. a little over mm-hmm. two years before she finally made the decision, okay, yes, I've got to claim this for myself so I can be happy. Mm-hmm. And on the other side of that, the benefit of having gone through that two and a half, you know, so years, Plus the year and a half on the other side of actually getting the divorce final and making sure it goes final because there's been a lot of resistance from her former husband to finalize it. Like this is a very long process, right? And so this is something that most people would like, I don't want to go through all that. But Mm -hmm. the benefit for her is that she actually is such a capable coach now and mentor. Like she, she can guide people through this process and really hold space for them and really, and have no judgment at all for however much time it takes people to make the choice. She can mm-hmm. be so patient and compassionate, which is a huge gold nugget inside of her. Like that is the oh, best yeah. thing. And what yeah. she really learned about herself is how powerful she is with her compassion and with her ability to be with very uncomfortable things long enough to see them clearly through her own filters. So she, mm. she's very, very gifted now. And now she's attracted, you know, a partner in the meantime, my boyfriend, who's very, very supportive, you know, very much there for her whenever she needs to talk about something. Mm-hmm. It's like the opposite of what she experienced before. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's really kind of amazing how it works when you really do. When you go through the transition, you do like immense inner work if you have the opportunity to do that. Not everybody does. But you have yeah. the opportunity to do immense inner work, and it's really important to do that. You know, I just mm-hmm. had an experience yesterday, Joyce, that really broke my heart. Can I share that with you guys? Sure. Yes. Yeah. So I actually, um, I also do energetic house clearings, and I had, mm-hmm. I'm have i known to do that. So I was called in because um, there was a woman who's been divorced for about 10 years. Uh, she's got, you know, a 16-year-old and a 19-year-old, and um, she she didn't do the inner work. Like, she tried, but she didn't get on the right path. Like, she couldn't find her way. Yes. And she turned to the bottle. You know, she turned to wine and drinking. And and this is very much a temptation, you know, following a big transition or even at the end of a marriage. The temptation is just to distract from it and just drink and try to cope. Yes. And that is a dangerous path. And what it led for her is she actually got to the place where she took her own life. And I just was there clearing her space and, Mm -hmm. and clearing all the energy and helping her transition into you know, the uh, the next place um, because her energy could still be felt very much in the house. And I want to say that this is why yesterday taught me in clearing that house, this is why I do what I do. It's very important for women to find their voices and yes. speak up for themselves. It's extremely mm-hmm. important, and it's very important to do the inner work required to be strong and resilient so mm-hmm. that you can take care of yourself emotionally and mentally and physically and financially so that you're not dependent on somebody to make you happy. Like, this is so important. And I really hope that that message is felt by everybody out there who's listening to this. Yeah, yeah. So you had a successful day for the lady. Definitely. I felt a lot of really good messages came in um, about why it is that she did what she did and from a soul level why it all happened. And so her family, her sister, her best friend were there and they were really able to get a lot of healing from that, from the insights mm-hmm. that I was able to channel. So which is mm-hmm. another thing I'm really glad I took my journey, Joyce, right? Because I couldn't channel 10 years ago. My brain was way too full of wine and 
and chatter, you know, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. there was no way I could have channeled anything for anybody. But because I took the journey to face all the difficult things within me and heal and walk the beauty way and really listen and be humble, like mm-hmm. now I was able to provide such a service for these people yesterday. So every one of uh, us has gifts like that inside, every one of us, and we're not going to find it if we don't take the journey. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's powerful. Oh, my. Yes. So I can see where your work is so rewarding in so many different ways because I didn't know you you um, were able to do that. You didn't mention that in your work. So anyway, that's interesting to know. Um, as uh, Because sometimes, and, you know, I was so disappointed when I first learned that I had drawn in my ex-husband to me because of where I was in my life. And I went, oh, really? I thought, oh, how could that be? But really, it's in my healing that I raise my energy level to draw in a partner that is more in in alignment with who I am, who I want to be, who I am, live, who I was meant to be. So, um, I that's that does require work. I must admit, yeah, Carrie, it does. It does. Yeah. You know, like uh. When I got, when I left the marriage, the first thing I wanted to do, of course, is find a, uh, find a, you know, Mr. Right, because I was sure he was yeah. going to ride up in his white horse and be like, oh, <laughs> my poor sweet thing, you've been so mistreated. You know, like I was yes, pretty sure that course. was going to happen. That yeah. didn't happen. No, that didn't happen. But what did happen <laughs> as I started to get savvy, you know, as you know, I know that you know this law of attraction, you learned this with Jack Canfield, right? So oh, yeah, the law yeah. of attraction. I was studying Dr. Joe Dispenza and some others because I was like yes. really going to manifest this, you know. So I yeah. I made my list. I made oh, my list of all the things, wait, you know, that to I tell wanted. Tell us about the Carrie. To tell us about the list, You're, would you hold that until after break? Because we need to yes, go break absolutely. now. So as you Listener. can tell. <laughs> As you can tell, my listeners out there, Carrie is amazing with what she has learned on her journey, and she is sharing it all with us today. So I am so thankful she's here. So don't go away. Just hang on. We'll be back shortly so that you can keep hearing more about Carrie's journey. Transformational coach, motivational speaker, and author Joyce Buford returns after this short break. Close your eyes and imagine living your life without limits. Where would you go? Who would you meet? What would you do? During an Uncover Your Hidden Genius session, you will discover what's keeping you from living your life with purpose, passion, and fulfillment of your potential. You'll get a clear vision of the steps you need to take to uncover your hidden genius so that you can live a life without limits. Sessions can be done over the phone, Skype, or in person. Find out more at www.JoyceBufordEmpowers.com or by calling 903-287-0747. Tokinet Radio has partnered with one of the largest travel booking engines in the world to offer savings of 15 to 30 percent or more on hotel booking fees through our own web portal, www.bestradiotravel.com. Discover the discount you can receive by going to bestradiotravel.com forward slash Joyce, J-O-Y-C-E, to see for yourself. This is a custom booking site for the listeners of my show through TogiNet Radio. We have negotiated special rates at over 650,000 hotels worldwide to save our customers money. Our members leverage our massive buying power to save thousands of dollars by booking with us. BestRadioTravel.com can beat the best prices offered by any other major travel booking website. Please go to BestRadioTravel.com forward slash Joyce, sign up, and enjoy the discounts. This is 
bestradiotravel.com forward slash Joyce, J-O-I-C-E. Welcome back to this segment of Second Wind. Joyce Buford, the author of Effortless Happiness, continues in this segment to share insights that will help you live a life of greater purpose and filled with happiness. Now here's our host, author and coach, Joyce Buford. Now welcome back because we're talking today with Carrie Hummingbird. And she has shared with us so much good information about her spiritual journey because as you know she is a mentor and and oops here I've got all of this energy medicine she's certified in energy medicine and a coach and an empowerment and so many more things. But before we went to break, just to bring you up, she was going to share with us some of the, what was it, Carrie? It was the list. The it list. It was the list. The, you know, what you want. Yes. You know, when you make the list, you know, everyone makes the list. Well, at some point you realize you can make the list, and then you can start manifesting it. But what I realized is that, in order to receive that list, I had to become everything on it. Like, I had to be the kind of person oh that would attract that person. Yes. Oh, yes. Because oh, you're talking attra- about like making my the husband list for now. the tractor. Yes. Yeah, the attraction list. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my husband now, I mean, when I finally I brought that list back out after about a couple months after we met, and I was like, my jaw dropped. I'm like, oh, my God, he's the guy. This is everything on the list. That I asked oh, for, but it took me a little really? while to get there. But yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, well, it was you, great. Yeah, but you had made that list like after you'd done your healing, your growing, your self. Um, um, what I want to say, your self correction, your self healing. So after you'd done all that work, then was the time to sit down and create the list of that special person that you wanted in your life. I think way too yeah. many wanted to spin it too early. Too early, yeah. Or you can use dating as a spiritual practice. So that's another that's kind of what I did. Like I did, I used dating as a spiritual practice. So what I did was I had my list of things I wanted and then yes. I would see what who I got matched up with, and I would go on the date, and I would, like, get to know this person, and then go, oh, I forgot. I need to also become this. Because, of course, it would be something I'd notice because I was doing my work. I was going to study with Heather Ashramara, and I was doing my spiritual work. And so yes. I was becoming aware. And so I actually yes. used my awareness practice to to date. And it, it was very interesting. It was a little frustrating, but it, it definitely helped me grow pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's a tremendous value to do, I don't know if you were doing the online dating or how you were doing it, but it's a tremendous advantage to be in a large city. But one of the wonderful things that you said on your list of things that you'd like to talk about is that rather than judging ourselves, which we normally do quite easy, because um, it, I, I think we learn that as small children. I know I learned my judgment because it was so common in my family. And, of course, I just took it on like it was part of growing. And so you kind of use that us or suggest that we use that more as just being curious about ourselves, curious that we do what we do. You, how have you used that? Yeah, because curiosity is a better ally for transformation. Because if you're judging yourself, really the judgment is all about not wanting to be wrong. Because if you're wrong, does there bad outcome? Like you're, you know, you're cast out or, or you're blamed or you're shamed or you're, you're punished. You know, there's like a negative outcome. So judgment's yes. all about making somebody wrong and punishing them. And so when you're, when you're dealing with that, then nobody is going to change because nobody wants to look at where they're wrong because they know if they're, if they end up being wrong, they're going to get punished. So Mm -hmm. that right and wrong game is is like, that's what destroyed my marriage. My first marriage was that right and wrong game, that judgment game. So what I learned how to do is become curious, you know, become curious about, wow, I'm feeling this because my partner just said this. 
why am I feeling that? What's going on mm-hmm. for me? Or I, I acted out this way with my partner. Why did I mm-hmm. do that? I'm not sure why I did that. I'm curious about why. Because now I realize that a lot of these things are conditioning in your brain. Like your brain has been conditioned by your, by the way you grew up, by your ancestry even, and your body's DNA. Like there's so much conditioning that we're not even aware of that we can become mm-hmm. aware of and because we can become curious about it. And then we don't have to be to blame for it. We can, but we do have to be responsible for it. So there's a difference. We don't have to be to blame, but we can be responsible, which means we can mm-hmm. take an action. And if we mm-hmm. can then become curious and then mm-hmm. see what's happening and take an action, now we're t- causing transformation to happen, which is changing the thing, which is making everything better. So mm. that's, that's why I love curiosity because it opens it up for something new to happen. And that's what we all really want at the end of the day. We don't want to argue. We just right. don't know how to get out of the right or wrong game because we don't want to be, nobody wants to be wrong. And this is what narcissism does. You know, it's like the narcissist never wants to, to apologize because really, like, people talk a lot about narcissists, like, oh, they're terrible, da 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 What I see now is that the narcissist is actually a wounded child, a very wounded child that cannot take being wrong about one more thing. So yes. they will not apologize or take responsibility because it's too painful. So this is mm-hmm. what ruins a lot of relationships. So I think curiosity is a good friend in this. Yeah. Somehow it takes the, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to say, the negative part of whatever you want to analyze or look at closer. It takes the negativity out of it. It kind of makes a game out of it. You know, why do they act like this? <laughs> yeah. What? It what? could be fun. You know, this whole yeah. thing can be fun. It doesn't have to be a punishment. And really, that's what we're here to do. If you look at it, we're here to learn. You know, and judgment is also tied in with comparison. So that, yes. that also causes a lot of trouble because you compare right. yourself to others and then you get upset because you don't have something that they have that you think you don't have. Well, right. you know, that is also yeah. equally unproductive. So you can become curious about why do I, do I really not have the thing that I, think that they have that I think I want, maybe I do have it, you know, like maybe, maybe I'm telling myself a story. Maybe I actually have the thing and I just need to like, you know, embellish it or let it out or shine it out more within myself, you know? So yeah. it really, curiosity is a good friend for the whole inquiry. Yeah. Well, I also use judgment, um, when in judging other people, it wasn't just judging me, but judging other people which was all about making me feel better. But, you know, do you did you ever have that? Did you ever do that? Do those two walk well, hand in hand? Of Judge? course I did. I, yeah, I was raised in a paradigm where that was happening. I was raised yeah. in a paradigm where there was, a, you know, a lot of projecting out the responsibility for things onto yes. other people. So I learned yeah. how to do that. I had blame mm-hmm. projected out onto me, and I certainly projected blame out onto other people. So I, you know, I do a lot of psychotherapy. I learned how not to do that, and I started taking accountability for myself, but then the situation I was in wasn't changing because my partner wasn't at the place where he was ready to make that transition. And I really do feel like it's a transition. It's like you're transitioning from one way of thinking that everybody Mm -hmm. goes through, like a phase. And then you've got to take the big leap into the next phase, which is that you take personal responsibility. You no longer blame somebody else. You take personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. That's a big leap for a lot of people. But it's a big open magic door, too, when you do it. So I I think that it's very easy. You get, you know... Uh, we, and, uh, and little kids are always doing this. Like my my new husband has two little ones, and they're always mm. playing the not me game. The I didn't do it, the not me game. You know, like I didn't do it, it's not me. Well, somebody did it, you know. So this is yeah. what we have to learn. We have to learn, you know. And as a parent, you know, we do our best to to make it so that there's not uh, so that it's easier for people to take personal accountability for things, so that we don't have that paradigm of judgment. And punishment. Mm-hmm. So that really locks it up. Yeah. I want to, you, um, you mentioned this about the narcissist. And do you think in today's world there are more? Now, this is just anyone's guess. I, I certainly understand that. But I tend to think there are more narcissists today than there used to be 
I don't know that that's true, but does it seem with all of this um, generation differences that we're creating more or not? I think that there is an awakening happening on the planet. And as people awaken, um, the people that wake up, they are in knowing. They start to be in the knowing. It's not mm. no longer believing or thinking. It's knowing. And once you get to knowing, you just kind of know that things are happening. Well, then mm. that creates because – and then when you meet people that also know, well, you just know. Like everybody yeah. knows that's in the group that's in the knowing, you know? <laughs> and then that creates a cohesion of people that are in the know. And then the uh-huh. people that are not yet at that phase start to feel the pressure of being revealed for not being in knowing. And uh. that creates this narcissism complex. You feel that? Like, it's like uh, trying to hide, but they're really, because narcissism is about hiding. It's about hiding mm-hmm. and shielding mm-hmm. and protecting and fear. It's all fear-based. And right. yeah, so I do think that more people, and, and really it's like the last ditch step before they have to be in the knowing which means you have uh, to be accountable for your action. You know, so because okay. yeah. once you yeah. know better, you got to do better, right? And I'm sure the Bible has yeah. all kinds of verses about that. So yeah. this is this is that, that we're in that part now where yeah. people are going to be held accountable. Yes, I did a series on narcissism uh, about two months ago, and it was a four-part series. And I was amazed at the people that responded to that. And it just was overwhelming sometimes because so many were responding to me and I was going, wow, this is really bigger than I thought. And so it does seem to be a part of many, many marriages and the cause of many, many marriages not, uh, you know, ending. Because And we also changed generations, you know, because my mother's generation, they didn't talk about, they pretended that everything was fine, and then that they had their battles at home behind closed doors, and they hid it. We're not right. doing that. You know, my generation's out there talking and speaking and exposing it. So uh-huh. that is in direct antithesis. So people that are born of generation of hiding things, they really don't, they're very uncomfortable with all this talking about it that's going on and revealing it and exposing it. And they, you know, so there's a lot of unrest. So yeah, yeah, this dynamic is definitely Mm -hmm. prevalent. Well, I think that's good. Don't you? I think that's good that we're learning to to talk about it. it. That's right. Now I want to talk about you. I want people to know you've done this reinvent yourself. You have an ebook that people can download on one of your sites, and you also do webinars. Now, how do people connect with you? Well, they can connect through my website, which is uh, carriehummingbird.com. That's K-E-R-R-I, hummingbird.com. Yeah, Mm -hmm. there's lots of easy little click link things to to look around and see what I got to offer. But uh, the Reinvent Yourself ebook is, uh, I think what I'm offering your audience is the ebook, but also a meditation to help you uh, receive gifts from three people that you admire, you know? So we're all, we're talking about that comparison game where we're like, oh, someone so has got something I don't want and I'm jealous, you know, now, now mm-hmm. I'm comparing myself to that person and feeling bad about me. Well, in this, it's like a little meditation. It helps you receive a little flame of that gift from that person and then Make it yours, like morph it into something that's for you so that you see, mm. I already have that. Like, I don't need to be jealous about this person because I have it too. So it's uh. really to help you see your own worth, you know, that you mm-hmm. already have whatever you think somebody has that you don't have. So that actually, right. uh, you got the download link for that, and that's what I'm offering your audience. Yes, yeah, so to get that, they go to carriehummingbird.com slash gift to get the ebook, correct? Well, the one I was talking about, I think, is Claim Your Destiny. So it's claim-your-destiny. Oh, okay. Okay, say that again. Claim-your-destiny on carryheimberg.com. Okay. All right. Now, the webinars, have, do you... How do you do those? Do they sign up for them by going to your website, or how do they get those? 
Yeah, so it's best to get on my list, and when you sign up for the ebook, you'll get on my list, and then you'll mm -hmm. you'll get notified when I'm having one of those webinars, those free webinars. I okay. did one recently, uh, How to Become the Leading Lady in Your Life, and that was a really great one. I'll do that one again. And mm -hmm. if you want to do Butterfly Circle, that's a program, and we do it over Zoom, so we do it a little bit like a webinar, except we see each other. So it's all, <laughs> it doesn't matter. You can live anywhere anywhere in the world and participate. Oh, no, does that mean we have to comb our hair and put on lipstick? No, people show up just as they are in my group. <laughs> they Very up good. Just as they are, yeah. <laughs> and then the other thing that I think people on this uh, podcast would like to know about is your Soul Nectar Show. And tell us about what you, how your guests, how you choose your guests and what they are all about. So on Soul Nectar Show, uh, the inspiration there was to talk about all things essence, all things spiritual, and to gather around the campfire and share our stories of awakening and, and <laughs> mystical moments and unbelievable synchronicities and those things that lead you to your purpose. And so that's what I share on my podcast. And we've got some great people I've interviewed. I just let spirit connect me with the right people, and it's kind of amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, the stories that they share are incredible. And mm -hmm. it's always enlightening. There's always a lot of good nuggets in there. But, so I I just love it. It lights me up. I know, Joyce, you do this podcast, and I'm sure it lights you up. And I yes. totally understand because I love, I love hearing people's stories on my podcast. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. You have them listed on your website, too, So I, uh, of the podcasts that are coming up. Wasn't that on your website? Yeah. Yeah, on soulnectar.show, which is the Soul Nectar uh -huh. website. It's soulnectar.show. And uh, all the podcasts are up there for freely accessing. You can also get it on iTunes or YouTube or Stitcher or Spotify, all those different places. Uh -huh. And, um, yeah, so and then the previews are, of the ones coming up are also listed on the homepage. Yeah. I, I don't know about you, but I love doing – the podcast or you would be your show. And are you surprised about how much you enjoy the connections? I love the, all my guests. Terry, you are now part of my family. So I just love the interaction and the growth that comes out of meeting so many different people. It's amazing. I, I, I learn from these just as much as the audience. You know, I'm having these conversations and something mm -hmm. new comes up. Like today, Joyce, you know, something new came out of the conversation that we weren't even planning to talk about. And then, wow, that was really profound and it was right on time. And I love that. Yeah. I love the way spirit connects us all to make those right. magic moments happen. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Um yeah, so I, I'm just thrilled that I found the podcast world. So I think it's opened up my life for sure. And all my listeners out there, I know you must feel the same way. And you're, what, if one likes a podcast, they like many podcasts. So there's a big listening audience out there. Now, what have you found to be probably the most valuable thing about how your life has led you to where you are today? Well, I think the most valuable thing about taking that leap of faith uh, eight years ago and leaving that relationship, and I really didn't know what was going to happen. I had no idea. I just knew I saw the sign, and and I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I didn't even know that was my spirit telling me that, right? Like, I wasn't glued mm -hmm. in yet. Uh, but like, okay, so that's it right there. The fact that now I'm fully aware that there is a consciousness guiding me through my entire life is there with me every single moment. It loves me like, and I am supported, loved, safe, held to do work in the world. And I feel purposeful. I feel, I feel like there's meaning to my life and, mm -hmm. you know, there's, Everything that I've gone through as part of that transition has been strengthening me, making me stronger, making me wiser, and mm -hmm. making me more valuable and of service. So I, I'm really grateful that I took that leap of faith because I could have, I could have not, you know, and then oh. every little leap of faith I took after, you know, taking the yoga class, taking the, mm -hmm. going to mm -hmm. the interview with this, with the shamanic practitioner, you know, all the mm -hmm. things I did. Spending my, and I invested my IRA, you know, I invested a lot of my IRA oh. in these programs, like doing that too. That was a huge leap of faith. 
That was my yes. test day. And yeah. I took that and I put money on the, on red. I was like, I'm going on red. I'm going to go with spirit. <laughs> I'll put all my money down, you know? And it pays off because the work you do on the inside, that's what makes your world beautiful. It's the work yes. you do on the, it's all the investment on the inside that makes you, your life beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you also shared with me over the break that you do periodically take trips and you take groups that go and you have one planned for next year? I do. We're going to go to Peru in June 2020. We're going to go at the end of the month. And Mm -hmm. this is very exciting to me. This is my first uh, trip I'm leading. I've been to Peru a number of times, but this is my first one I'm leading. And we are going to be in the Sacred Valley. We're going to be working with the shamans. Uh, the Carol Shamans, who I is my first lineage, I love them. They are rainbow people. They are beautiful, heart-centered, lovely people. And they're mm-hmm. going to be leading us in some despacho and healing. And the thing I love about it is um, people that haven't gone yet to Peru in this way, like maybe you went and did the tourist thing, but this is the yeah. authentico, you know. So, like, yeah. I really love this. And to, to open that door for people, I mean, it, it's pretty magical what happens. You kind of blows your way. At least it blew me away when I did it with my school. So I'm really yeah. excited to be able to do that for people and to see the lights go off, you know? Very excited. Yeah. So how do people find out or if they're interested in the trip, how do they sign up for the trip? Or so there's more a link information on my website, about actually. It. Yeah, there's, uh, there's a menu on my website for retreats. Uh-huh. Uh, the top menu, and then there's the, the Peru 2020 is on the, the pull-down from that menu. Well, that's a big step, taking your first trip, first group. That's an awesome it is. thing. How did you come about making that decision that you want to do that? Well, I actually uh, did that in a meditation. I was uh, working in a deep meditation and in the jungle, on my own trip, I was taking a retreat of my own, my, my mentors that lead a trip to the jungle. And uh-huh. we were doing a med- I was doing a meditation all day long. I was doing a five day meditation. And mm. I kept hearing June 2020, June 2020, you're going to bring the mountains and the jungle together for a group of people. I was like, okay, let's do it. And I didn't <laughs> know how that was going to happen. But it is happening, and we're not going to go to the jungle because a lot of my people are not ready for that yet. But we're going right. to stay in the Sacred Valley. We're going to go in the Sacred Valley. We're going to stay with my friend Daniel Gutierrez, who has a beautiful space oh. in, in PSAC. Oh, yay. Yeah, Daniel, who's also a speaker, and he's, he's very well-known. He's a, he's a heart-centered guy. He's a great spiritual teacher all by himself, and he does retreats all the time. But he's going to be my... He's going to be assisting me through this one, which is really wonderful. He's going to be there, my backup for my first retreat. Oh, yeah. That'll be wonderful to have that. And he has a place in Peru? Is that? He does. He's got a retreat center called, like, Catalina Resort. Oh. Oh, how wonderful is that? For sure. Yeah, so it's like, you know, Western Comfort in the middle of PSAC. (laughs) <laughs> and Sacred Valley, we're going to go to Machu Picchu, you know, so we're going to do Machu Picchu, but we're also yeah. going to go to sacred sites that people are less familiar with that are not so touristy, and we're going to do yes. a sacred ceremony there. Like, we're going to work with the Carol Shaman. Yeah. Oh, how wonderful. Well, I can tell you, I have thoroughly enjoyed our visit today. You have opened up so many windows and doors in people's minds that I know they're going to definitely want to connect with you, find out more about you, maybe go to on the trip or take a course or definitely listen to your podcast. So I just really thank you, Carrie, for being on a guest on my show and uh, for the work that you're doing down in the Austin area. Awesome. Now, do you also take uh, clients over the Internet? I do. Yeah, there's a yeah. scheduling thing that people can book. Um, they can do spiritual healing or any anything else that they want to. They can do a mentoring session with me. And I do offer a free discovery session as well. Oh, awesome. Well, I want to thank you again for being here today. 
you've um, really, you're exceptional, and I'm thrilled to uh, have had you on my sh- podcast. So thanks so much Thank for being here. Thank you so here. much, Joy. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure to be on your show. And once again, I'm really grateful to you for holding this forum for all the the women that are going through a big transition like this. It's so needed yeah. to have support and, and something yeah. that you're offering. It's really beautiful. Yeah. Thanks. Now, for you listeners out there, I want you to decide what you're going to choose for yourself today. Make sure this week that it's something that will move you forward in your life. You know that I'm going to announce about my course later this month and that I'll tell you more about that as we get closer to the event. But I so appreciate that you took time from your schedule to be here today. Make this week memorable. So be sure and step up, step forward, listen to podcasts, listen to Carrie, do your research and find out what's out there waiting for your growth. This has been my growth as well today. So I'm always happy to visit with whoever is my guest. Thank you for being here today. Joyce Buford returns next week at the same time for another edition of Second Wind. Through the Joyce Buford Empowerment System, women are receiving the support they need through their transitions and are able to reclaim their true purpose with confidence. They receive the tools they need to map out new lives. You can find out more about her coaching services at JoyceBufordEmpowers.com.